Hi, I'm Stuart from the Norfolk Honey Company and welcome back to our allotment apiary where we have our uh, chronic bee paralysis virus colony that we've been checking up on over the past few months since we discovered that they had chronic bee paralysis virus. Uh, for those of you that have seen the earlier video, you'll know that we brought them here from another site to isolate them and we've been carrying out some checks over the interim period since around June time to really check to see if there's anything that we can do to help them recover. And those videos, the interim videos, uh, we've posted on our Patreon page. So if you wanted to take a look at those, then pop over to our Patreon site and I'll leave all the details in the description below. As you can see, we're in the polytunnel today because it's incredibly windy outside, yet in mid-October, we have some incredible temperatures again today. It's likely to be around 19 or 20 degrees Celsius. And the bees, I think, are, are as much confused over it as we are. But they're out foraging. And uh, I've just taken a look at the hive. There is a large pile of dead bees at the front of the hive again. So it looks as if the chronic bee paralysis virus is still gripping this particular colony and it throws up the question for me with so many colonies should I be uh, putting in as much time and effort in this one colony to try and help them survive or should we have taken uh, more drastic steps earlier on. Before we go and take a look at the bees I just wanted to mention my podcast that I've been producing this year it's called Beekeeping Short and Sweet and if you go to any of the podcast players you should be able to search and find that and it would be great to have you along for our podcast which is a weekly podcast and it covers a range of topics for uh, all levels of beekeeping uh, plus there's a couple of interviews in there and as we go through the winter hopefully I can produce some more interview podcasts and discussions generally. Again I'll leave all of the details in the description below so please do take a look at that. So let's go and take a look at this colony and I'll get my bee suit on, we'll light the smoker and head into the apiary. So we've got a feeder on the colony still, I've not checked it uh, over the last week or so. It'll be interesting to see whether they've taken all the syrup down but they had been fairly slow to take a lot of syrup down but then the number of bees in this colony has depleted quite a lot so we'll have to see what they're like. And I'm not sure if you can see but we've still got quite a bit of syrup in this container so we'll just take that off. The bees are feeding but not taking down as much as I'd like to see. I'd like to have seen a lot more bees feeding on the syrup. One of the things we also have to do is to remove the Varroa treatment, which is the Apistan strip that we had in here. So we'll just remove those as well. So just looking at the frames here, we've really only got a nucleus size colony. They're on maybe five seams of bees, which is obviously still a concern. It's, it's disappointing, but not uh, totally unexpected really. So we'll remove these apisan strips as we go. But let's just take out some of these outside frames and see how the brood and bees are looking as we get towards the middle. So as we lose bees, we're obviously depleting the workforce and nowhere near the number of bees that we would like to see in here. So we've done a couple of shakeouts. For those of you that haven't seen the videos, we've, we've shaken the bees out a couple of times. And if you're interested in seeing how we've performed that, then take a look at the videos on our Patreon page.
So still quite a lot of shaking bees. So they're not doing a waggle dance, they're actually showing type 1 syndrome. Uh, but I don't see as many, uh, certainly on this frame, as many type 2 bees. And those are the dark, shiny, wet looking bees, greasy looking bees. So we've got um, no brood in that frame, but it, there's an amount, uh, quite a heavy amount of sugar syrup, some stores in there, so uh, plenty of pollen as well. So they've been out collecting what's probably ivy at this time of the year. So here we've got our brood nest. So I can remove this strip. This is the Apistan strip. And what is noticeable is that there are quite a few bees holding their wings open, whereas normally with the healthy bees you'd expect to see them with the wings folded flat over their abdomens, so they lay flat over the backs. We've got quite a lot of bees here holding their wings at maybe 45 degree angle, almost a dislocated uh, look to them, and that's one of the signs of chronic bee paralysis virus. But we've got brood, there's healthy brood, and we've got eggs. And one of the questions that I had posed is that the queen, despite all of this viral infection, the queen seems to be almost immune to it. Uh, we've, all the way through, we've had the queen consistently laying eggs, she appears to be healthy, and I just wonder if there's something that causes the queen to either be immune to uh, the virus or whether she's just uh, somehow not affected by it. So we've got another frame of brood here, and that looks healthy. Now we can take out this second Apistan strip. Again, another frame of brood, which looks, it looks really healthy. The brood pattern looks fine. The brood looks healthy where we've got open brood. So how does this chronic bee paralysis virus move through what appears to be healthy brood and into the bees. Uh, so here's our queen. Just in here. And as I've said, she looks perfectly healthy. She's looking into the various cells, moving around, and this colony prior to chronic bee paralysis virus have been a really productive colony. You can see the workers attending her. So we'll pop her back. So the temptation really is to maybe transfer these bees into a nuke box so that they have a smaller area through the winter to, to have to keep warm. We're through the brood nest now and into more stores. And I imagine that uh, the bees are storing not just the sugar syrup, but they're also bringing in ivy, which is going to granulate fairly solidly. So we'll have to watch them fairly closely because there won't be enough bees here to be able to keep that heat into the honey so that it remains liquid for them. The ivy will granulate fairly quickly. And then this last frame, with last two frames, you can see are completely empty. 
So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. There's probably seven frames. We could lose this outside frame and then move the bees into a six frame nuke. And if we were to do that, then I think we would have to do that this weekend. The temperatures are still quite mild, so we can, we can move them now, but I think it'll start to cool down a little bit from here on. Looking at the bees on the top of the frames here, there doesn't seem to be the quantity of greasy, black, dark looking bees, the type two syndrome as we've had previously. Uh, there are one or two that look as if they're probably on their way, but other than that, it is mostly type one. So I think what we'll do is uh, close them up and then have a think about how we can help them through the winter. So the bees are still alive in that particular hive and I'm hopeful that maybe we can just get them transferred into a commercial nuke box. I think we are going to transfer them. There's too much space in that brood box for them really and it would be good just to get them into one of our perhaps poly nukes that we've got and overwinter them in that and then hopefully they'll survive and come through in the spring and we can carry on. Uh, and build them up again in the spring. One thing I did notice was that there were no dead bees on the floor of the hive. Previously we've had to empty the floor because there was a mound of dead bees so perhaps we are getting through to a point where the bees are going to recover and can start to build up again. Uh, but we'll see how that goes over the winter. We've still got the feeder on, we'll give them some fondant over winter as well and hopefully we can build them back up again and they're going to be fine for next year. I hope you find that interesting. Uh, please do leave some messages below if you've got any questions and if you'd like to see the full series of videos then pop over to our Patreon page where you can connect up and have a look at all of the videos there. Don't forget the weekly podcast, beekeeping short and sweet, and we'll catch up next time. Thanks for watching.